Hi and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at the logical editor presets. Now the logical editor is something which quite a few people uh, draw away from because it's a little bit complicated and we are going to be looking at it in a mini series at some point in the future but right now I want to get to something which will hopefully allow you to see the parallel logical editor but also again get a lot of jobs done more quickly and help with your workflow as people say. So the the great advantage of this is all the versions I've seen uh, recently have got logical presets in. So even if you don't have uh, the top edition of Cubase, whatever it's called, in any uh, given version cycle, uh, you will have the logical presets. So even Cubase AI 7, etc. has these. So this means you will be able to do a lot of this stuff and also uh, have an excuse to not get bogged down in the complexities of it. So it's effectively a processor which automates... Uh, generally doing uh, MIDI data changing, data entry, etc. So it's it's a really useful processor, but most importantly, there are lots of things which you would probably do which are quite repetitive, which it can do for you if you can find the right uh, preset in this case. So we're just going to have a quick look through and hopefully say so we'll encourage you to have a bit more of an experimental approach to it and make use of it. So, for instance, if we take, here's a part here. So if we take this part here, we can see that it's um, fairly mundane in terms of the MIDI that's been programmed as far as the velocities are concerned. Now, you might want to liven that up, and obviously you could go through it and draw in some attempts at randomness, uh, but that can often be quite difficult and long-winded, particularly if you've got a long part to do. So instead, if you go to MIDI, uh, logical presets, and under standard set one, we have... All these useful things here, particularly random velocity, 6 to 100. So we'll do that. And we can see we get a random velocity for that part. Now, often that will be too much. But if you uh, have seen the video on editing, automation, and MIDI data, etc., then you'll know that if you can highlight everything, you can use these two handles. So this one here scales around the center and reduces the difference between them. And this one here does the overall level. So if we do that, that's going to reduce the difference between those and make them more uh, musical and then here we can control the overall level and we can maybe do a couple of iterations of that to get it the way we want but there it's uh much smoother but random and that would work on whether it's i mean here it's only you know seven eight bars long but if you'd done something which was hundreds of bars long it would have done that and they would have been uh, random and non-repetitive which is useful now, if we look through, we can see as well under standard set one, we've got some other useful uh, general purpose things, random notes here. Now, this may not seem so useful straight away, but this can be really useful if you've got a, a percussion sound which you've set up in a sampler and you've set your key scaling to maybe a few percent, then this is the way that you can set those notes to be random to give you some randomness in pitch, but not much. But obviously, if you do this with a normal part like this and play it, it is literally going to be random notes. There's no key to it at all, uh, which you can tune later on if you look at the logical editor. So if you want randomness, then obviously this is a great way to do it. So if you wanted to do that, you could just draw in a line. So I'll just draw in a straight line. So I'm just going to delete all those notes first. Keyboard's playing up typically. So just going to draw in a set of notes there. And then you can just randomize them using that. So if we go to that there, random notes, and now we've got a random and so on. And obviously, if you did them over a quicker time, if you want that kind of random um, computery sound, as it were, that people associate with it, where it's just lots of random pitches, then this is a really quick way to generate it. And because it genuinely is random, it's going to be much better than if you try and do it manually. So while the musical uh, uses for that in itself are fairly limited, if you transpose that into another key, uh, you might come up with an interesting idea. So you can use transpose and then fix that to a key, or you can do that in the full logical editor, as we'll see uh, later on. So let's just put that back to where it was before. Now, looking through these here, so I'm not going to go through everyone because it would take forever. 
But you can see there are useful uh, things here. So fixed velocity, etc. half tempo or double tempo. So if you don't want to do uh, time stretch to do that, you can do that really quickly. Push back and push forward. That can give you just something that's pushing ahead of the beat and helping to drive things forward or laying them back. So if you want to uh, maybe have your hi-hats pushing things forward, this is a quick way to do it rather than trying to grab them all. So that just pushes them forward four ticks, which generally is, is enough to give you that kind of feel. You can see under standard set two, we've got uh, quite a few useful things, particularly deleting uh, low velocity notes. So if you're uh, as bad a keyboard player as I am, you will often play lots of unintended low velocity notes in your parts. But also if you've got a guitar synth as well, that often happens. You have them come out where it just misdetects things that you're doing. So this allows you to easily delete those really, really quickly. That can be very useful. Uh, and transpose, limited use here, but if you're in here, it's it's quicker than if you need to go to transpose setup. And because it's set to 12, you know, often you want to move that up an octave. But to be honest, I think you'd probably do that with a keyboard shortcut. Uh, if you're not aware of that, if you've got anything selected, shift and up arrow or shift and down arrow on your keyboard uh, will do that for you anyway. So taking a quick trip through some of the others, select notes on beat. Now this one is really useful because often you want to accent the notes on the beat. So we'll take this as an example. So if we go to select notes on beat, you'll see there it's pick the notes which actually fall on the beat. And now we can use the control at the top and we can move those up, etc. So those notes which do fall on the beat can get accented. Great for when you're doing drum or percussion programming, etc to give it a bit of a feel of the, the beat being accented. So that's much quicker than trying to go through and select them all. Now, note expression, we're not going to look at those because uh, we're going to cover VST3 instruments and note expression, etc. on a future series of videos, so that will be that. But if you're into those kind of things already, then this is going to be uh, useful for you. But musical context, so there's quite a few here. Now, these don't work perfectly, okay? So it's important to highlight the fact that they, they don't, entirely work but they work often better than than nothing at all so if we look at another part here so uh, where have we got there's one with a couple of chords so here you can see we've got okay now these are um in this case a couple of minor chords and they're not in root position they've actually been inverted so we've got d minor there and then e minor there now if we use one of the musical context ones here we can add a minor seventh so it detects where this chords with three or more voices and it adds a minor seventh to them so we do that and then lo and behold you can see the c and the d have appeared now that may look a bit disjointed but in fact if we move these up an octave you'll see it's perfectly correct and we end up with notes that fit there and same for that as well so that works that works pretty well it doesn't always work sometimes it misdetects detect the root of the chord etc but it again a lot of these things are worth a try and they may take you in a new direction sometimes they'll take you in a direction you don't want to go uh, but there we go now the final section there we're going to look at here's a simple piano piece with just some triads in nothing particularly exciting there now, again, under musical context, you can you can play around uh, with all of these, but transpose highest pitches one octave down and lowest pitches one octave up is useful for creating inversions. Now, again, this doesn't work exactly as textbook, so it's not perfect, but if we apply that, so we're going to transpose those lowest pitches up an octave, and you can see it's taken sort of an aggregate of what the lowest pitches are and then moved them up. So in this case, the E from my C major chords have been moved up and maybe I didn't want that but that's taken those and reinverted most of those chords and done a lot of the work for you so it's it's not going to be perfect because it's it's analysis isn't always totally perfect and it seems to take an aggregate of what the lowest note is or what the highest note is but it can do some of the work for you but also again maybe take you in a new direction you wouldn't have thought of so that can be useful for that now the final set under added for version three, you can see the names get a bit more um, esoteric here. So experimenting with those may be worthwhile. But one thing here, select all events uh, in cycle range is quite useful. So if you've got your locator set, as you can see I've done here, and we've got this um, guitar part here in this particular one. So that 
and we just zoom out so you can see where the locators are set between 17 and 19 and it can select all those notes between there which again you could do with a mouse but often it can be a bit messy so just select all events and cycle range and you can see all of those have got selected without me having to zoom in or play around at all so that's just a quick look through at some of these say so we haven't looked at all of them uh, there are contexts in which all of these are worthwhile, apart from init, which uh, resets it to do nothing. So that's not such a useful preset. But all of these others here can, if you're aware of them, they can help you do things much quicker that otherwise would take you a long time, which really is the point of the logical editor. So as I say, we'll be looking at that uh, in the future. But for now, think about these, have a look through and see which ones uh, will help you work faster and more efficiently and more accurately because obviously you know generally the computer if it gets it right it gets it right and can do hundreds of these things whereas if you're doing them manually it can take you a bit longer so have a look through those and see how you get on